okay am i live seeing zero comments seeing nothing at all okay why why are you not working am i on this no am i on this hello 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 is this working oh my word this is awful right guys if this is working um <laughs> yeah hi cindy something is up with facebook at the minute so um guys if you're coming in on facebook please let me know i will try and log in um let me see if i can can everybody can, cindy can you hear me okay everybody's on another stream that's just not streaming for an, for some re weird weird reason um yeah i had to move the stream there cara um if you could let people know uh, that would be fantastic for me. Uh, I'm trying to do it now. Um, apologies, it is not me. It is YouTube. So YouTube has, for some reason, decided to uh, move me here and bump me off. Uh, so at least I'm live. Um, we may not have people on at the minute because they're all on another stream waiting on me, but at least I'm live. Praise God. So um, I don't know if I'm live on Facebook yet. I am yet because I can see Facebook users. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Sophie. Guys, um, if you're coming on, if you could do me the favor, we have another sort of false stream happening um, that it just wouldn't go live with. The whole system shut down. Uh, shows you that the enemy want, doesn't want this out. So... Um, if you could do me a favor just someone comment on the other even if you can link this uh i don't know how to do that myself this is where you need moderators hold on share copy link here we go and let me see if i can share this on the other one so guys as you're coming on if you can um say hi say where you're coming in from do me a favor if the enemy wants to stop this uh tonight um share it where you're at comment as much as you can we have loads and loads and loads to talk about tonight and i think that's the reason um why this has been halted hindered in some way so um i'm going to take a second and share this myself if i can ask you to do the same um that would be fantastic so i'm just going to share this on my own social media so bear with me here we go we're coming live now um there we go okay guys as we're coming on tonight um unfortunately obviously the it sort of messed this up and it's youtube's just mucked us about here but we have loads to talk about and i want to talk about things prophetically and i want to talk about things from the point of view of the four horsemen of the apocalypse and i want to talk about um, them in context of the old testament and i want to talk about um, the albert pike letters and specifically um, what is happening in the world right now so without further ado i want to give you a few things and i'm praying that technology doesn't come against me because it does seem to be youtube that's the issue here um, but at least we're live so um, i can even fix it in the the after sort of uh, element. Um, I know most of you have heard of um, Livia to Tosici. Uh, Livia Tosici is currently um, awaiting court trial. Um, and the reason is, is for what you see right now. So you know that there is a thing called public spaces protection order in the UK. And the public spaces protection order bill is all about uh, creating buffer zones where people cannot pray, people cannot uh, talk about Jesus, talk about Christianity. And it is specifically Christianity is becoming the target of the day. So um, Livia here is uh, going up in court because she held up a sign in a, a buffer zone in Bournemouth saying, um, 
do you want to talk or here if you want to talk and this is the way the world is going now and there's something specific i want to talk about tonight um, i want to talk about a new un declaration that's coming out um, that's going to affect everybody um, and it's why we need to be um, sort of standing against this in both prayer and signing petitions but i want to talk to you straight off the bat right I believe that we are in end times. I think most people on here believe that we're in end times. And I believe that we're at an escalated, an escalated, accelerated point. Now, yesterday marked that for me. Yesterday marked the the um, incursion, the missile strike upon the Iranian embassy in Damascus pushes us to Jeremiah 49 and Isaiah 17 and the, the, the building of Psalm 83. And as that's the case, April has started prophetically at warp speed. And there's something coming on April 5th that you need to be aware of. If you're not aware of it, hopefully you will be by the end of tonight. But it, it, it it's a time in which the church needs to do more, be more, be as much as you can be for the kingdom of God, because the kingdom of darkness has moved up into the fifth or sixth gear. And I don't want the church and I know others don't want the church lagging behind in this. We need to fight the good fight until we're removed. For that reason, we are going to be starting, and we talked about this last year, a house church network. So if you're in a position that you can't geographically get to a Bible believing um church that that tells you the time and the season and the hour that you're living in and equips you and teaches you to equip others then we want to help okay victory church wants to help this is um not a a, a scheme in any way we just we, there's no charge for this we want to equip you to uh start a home church in your area wherever you are so if you're in canada if you're in america if you're in australia if you're in iceland wherever you are we want to equip you and that's whether that's through providing resources whether that's just helping you through connection through prayer through uh standing with you we want to do that because listen time is moving quickly and as time is moving quickly we want to make sure that you know your area is impacted for the kingdom of heaven we want to make sure your area is impacted as much as as possible right now i'm not talking your area may be full of churches but if your churches are all about their programs and seven ways to get rich and all of this nonsense they're not about the kingdom business so it might be that you were born for this time and i believe that is a, a prophetic word anyway you were born for this time and as such we want to do whatever we can to help equip uh, enable you and i'm going to talk to other people um other people who teach uh prophecy and stuff to maybe get involved in this we want to be able to just push this out across the board help as many as we possibly can equip you to be salt and light in your area to be people who go out and bring the kingdom and to teach the rightly divided entirety of the word OK, I don't believe that the word should be sectioned off to the point that we only teach the good news, gospel, the salvation story, because there's you need to be discipled. You need to be equipped. You need to be emboldened and you need to be ready for the age they're living in. So if you're interested for this, right, for the ease of me reading this back, hit one. Now, if, if this is something that interests you, just type one. And then that gives me an idea of what we can look at and how, what we can do and how uh we can equip you where you're at and i want to talk quickly about certain things as well there are um things happening across the world right now and as they're happening i think the church needs to be aware of them the church needs to be aware for instance of the prophetic implications of yesterday of the prophetic implications and what can come from this and what might transpire from this and what might uh, be the repercussions. And I said last night, uh, if you study physics, physics tells you um, that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And Iran has been stoking the realms of terrorism globally around the world for decades. And you know, as there there's an Iranian, and we know intelligence sources have leaked that there was an uh, Iranian meeting uh, to discuss further efforts in terms of strategy against uh, the West and against Israel, and that 
provocated an attack, but there will be an, a reaction off that. This is kind of how it works. It's like table tennis. It's like ping pong. So as that's happening, be aware that you're sitting at the precipice of a political, um, uh, sorry, a prophetic um slide a prophetic free fall of where we are starting to speed up now on april 5th and i'm going to tell you this straight away before we get into the word on april 5th let me just find this uh doo -doo -doo. where are we do you know i don't even know if i've put is that it, the unnamed one yes it is on april 5th the un are um voting on their I know there's a game called this because I've been told about this crimes against humanity um, treaty now the crimes against humanity treaty is specifically going to regardless of whether they're openly saying this or not it is going to target the believer right so certain things will be considered crimes against humanity such as reading certain re certain sections of the word of god the holy word of god out loud now this is a un declaration so this isn't a case of just being in canada just being in certain areas just being in you know la or even in the uk it is everywhere right so it's a united nations declaration they are coming against people who are uh, like we said a second ago praying and are holding up placards to offer support in buffer zones um they are coming against people who are quoting scripture they are coming against people who stand upon the biblical definition of marriage and the biblical definition of uh, a union between a man and a woman and how it should be and gender and all of that and this is coming in this is being voted on on the 5th of april okay so there's a treaty um that i will share there's the a link to sorry sign a petition against this to get your um local po uh, politician member of parliament member of senate whatever um to at least be your voice against this and I think that we need to do that now we know that that's fallen on deaf ears in the past because i know that people in our church we we petitioned against the bringing in of digital ids in the uk but they came in anyway we petitioned against certain other uh facets of political structuring of the beast system that has come in but it's come in anyway and like the old uh like virgil's echologue of 40 bc says that when it when apollo's reign begins it is established by justice it's justice establishes it at the gate in other words the legal system is setting up the 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 the, the foundations the atmosphere for the emergence of what uh, second thessalonians 2 calls the lawless one the antichrist does this make sense guys now, I'm hoping people will click on that we're not on the other stream. So hopefully people click on to this and they start uh, coming over. But I want to ask a few things tonight, right? I want you to, if you have your Bibles, open up at Zechariah. In fact, I might have, yeah, they're on this computer too. So hold on. Um, no, it's not. Okay, so I'm going to read Zechariah 1. We're going to talk about it from that context. So these are things to watch. Now, you, some of you have seen the way the world's gone. Some of you, have, so, some of you would have seen what went viral um, at the protests in London at the weekend with um, a policeman failing to see how a SWAT sticker represented anti-Semitism. Um, but we're living in a world where Isaiah 5 verse 20 is being fulfilled in front of us, where good is seen as evil and evil is seen as good. And I want to sort of trace back a little bit are we all aware of the albert pike letters okay uh, let me know if you're aware if not i will explain them the albert pike letters albert pike who was um, a freemason an open luciferian uh satanist um uh, dark society alumni that sort of thing so albert pike um in 1871 wrote uh, a, a letters to a friend and these letters um, 
they are let me see if i can find them yep these letters are already displayed in i think uh the museum in london so the albert pike letters that we talk about represent a, a luciferian vision that albert pike had okay so he had this vision that he shared with his friend through a series of letters and in this vision he uh, outlines three world wars he tells the now remember this is 1871 so he tells you the framework of world war one that it will be between the bolsheviks the the, the, the the czars and the rest of europe and on the outcome of that you will get the emergence of communism now he called it we can put a tick behind it he was right that's 1871 he predicted what would happen in 1914. now i'm going to explain why yes it's luciferian yes he's satanic but you have to remember i don't believe this is some sort of wisdom coming from him i believe that what we read in scripture we know that satan knows scripture in matthew chapter 4 satan has the presumption to even quote scripture quote the word to the word incarnate so he also included world war ii now remember this is 1871 and he talks about world war ii and as he talks about world war ii he uh, describes it as a a war with national socialism that he call he calls nazism and again bang on the money before we had the term nazi right before that term was being used now then he also talked about world war three and we'll get there in just a second okay i'm going to share this okay so albert pike talks um 1871 plan for three world wars now the key word there is plan because each of these wars he talks about being brought about by agent provocateurs of freemasonry those that are involved in the luciferian ideal goal of the day to bring about luciferian worship worship of satan this is the the plan that he laid out in 1871 now the first world war he was correct on the outcome he was correct on what would happen the second world war he actually said would lead to the establishment of israel as a state again may 14th 1948 this happened now on the third world, excuse me, the third world war, he, he says it must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agenter of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam, the Muslim Arabic world, and political Zionism, the state of Israel, mutually destroy each other meanwhile the other nations once more divided on the issue will be constrained to fight to the point of physical moral spiritual and economic exhaustion we shall unleash the nihilist and the atheists and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm which in its all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism's orig origin of savagery and of the most bloody turmoil then everywhere and it carries on after that i'm going to just put up another uh let me see if it's this one um let me just scroll down here we go so we know that he talks about um the general public being led to believe that communism is a movement of the workers so this is what comes off the back in 1917 now this is prevalent to zachariah right this is what comes off the back in 1917 uh, with the uh, emergence of the Bolshevik Revolution and uh, it comes off the back of what World War One and he says that it, they believe that communism is the, the movement of the workers but it's to destroy capitalism but they're actually pawns in the game and the, it's the red fog over America prove that both the British and American intelligence officers obtained authentic documentary evidence which proved the internationalist capitalist operating through their international banking houses had financed both sides in every war and revolution fought since 1776 now if we scroll down on this let me just do this now it says there is plenty of documentary evidence to show that pike like Rishpat, 
was head of the Luciferian priesthood in his day. In addition to the letter he wrote to Mazzini in 1871, another he wrote to the heads of the Paladin Councils on July 14, 1889, fell into the hands fell into hands others than intended. It was written to explain the Luciferian dogma concerning worship of Satan and worship of Lucifer. In it he said, that which we say to the crowd is we worship God, but it is the God that one worships without superstition. The religion should be by all us initiates of the higher degree maintained in the purity of the Luciferian doctrine. Now I'm not going to even read the rest because it actually just makes me feel sick, but I want you to understand this, right? He was right on how World War, World War I would um, come to be and how World War I would finish and the same with World War II and how it would finish and how communism would be the constant erosion of Christianity in the West to lay the foundation for the Third World War, which would be between Israel and the Islamic world, something that we're seeing begin right now, I believe. Now, how could that be so accurate? And well, like I said, Lucifer studies scripture. Satan knows his scripture. He knows the word. That's why we see him quote Psalm 91 to Jesus in Matthew chapter 4. That's why we see him try and twist scripture by creating cults uh, and creating false religions like Islam, creating false religions and being, remember that Muhammad who was illiterate was chosen to write the the Quran and as he was chosen to write the Quran it was because he had spent time in a cave talking to who he called the angel of light aka the one that is called, also called in, in Latin the light bearer the same name that we have for Lucifer comes from the the Hebrew Hekel right whenever we look at this we can see that there's strategy here and I want you to look at this for or I want you to sort of come on this walk with me because I want you to ask the question to yourself are we already in World War III now you can probably guess my answer to this but in Zechariah 1 I want you to understand what's happening here and this is the way I see it right I'm not saying this is dogma but I am saying that this is something to look at in Zechariah chapter let me see I think I've actually written this out rather than put my glasses on in Zechariah chapter 1 verse 8 I, it says, I saw by night and behold a man riding on a red horse, right? Now the red horse is the war horse. We can break this down in Revelation chapter 6. White is the conquering, going out to conquer, who we often qualify as the Antichrist. Red is war uh, and uh, friction and fractious activity like that. Black is famine and lack. Um, pale is is pestilence and disease so he says he sees this red one this man on the red horse and it stood in the midst of the myrtle trees in the hollow and behind him were horses red sorrel and white and in verse 10 it says the angel identifies this as the one who goes to and fro leading the horses now i want you to just follow with me and track with me in what i'm saying here in 1917 off the back of the first world war predicted right there is the communist uprising there is the bolshevik there's lenin and trotsky all uprising right and war war the set our war sort of lays the foundation for their arising of communism as an alternative to faith right communism where state becomes god and god is removed okay and this happened now, this start means that it came in on the back of the red horse. It came in on the back of the, the war horse. Communism rose, rode in the back of the war horse. If we go further here, now this will make sense once we put these together. In Zechariah chapter 6, it mentions the same four colors as we see in Revelation 6. And it says in verse 6, the black one is going to the north country. Now, the most northern part, according to the father of history, Herodotus, the most northern area to Israel is the land of Magog, right? Is this land that is classed, um, probably in modern terms, as Russia, but actually probably more accurately, what was the USSR, okay? So we see that the black horse in Zechariah 6 
goes up to the most northern country and it says it was followed by the white horse. So this is my what I'm trying to point out here that I believe is um, how we look at Zechariah 6 and Revelation 6. Revelation 6, the horses of the apocalypse are not allowed free reign. But in Zechariah 6, they are told lahit halek. They are going to and fro throughout the world. That's that term, to and fro throughout the world. Lahit halek. In fact, halek means to lead to bring, to lead away, to carry. Hillel means to shine, to be a light bearer. It is also the root word of Lucifer in the Hebrew. Okay? So what we see is these four horses in Revelation 6 are on, they're not ready to be released fully. But in Zechariah 6, they're geographically positioning themselves like chess pieces on the chessboard for that point of the gun going off and the race starting does my does my analogy make sense right you think about it if you've ever seen a horse race and the horses are in the stalls they don't stand still in the stalls they kick they they move from side to side they're kind of jumping up and down ready to go well what we see before the opening of the seals in Revelation 4, 5 and the free reign of these four horses coming out, the white, the red, the black and the pale, we see that Zechariah 6 represents a geographical positioning of such. So what it says on the back of the red horse, Zechariah 1, on the back of war, which I would qualify as the great war of the 20th century, the great war that, that um, Albert Pike the Satanists predicted, but also the Great War that we know um, had a lot of biblical fulfillment in it as well. We got the Balfour Declaration at the end of the Great War. Now, this, this Great War also unfortunately laid the foundation for, uh, or the, the, I guess, the atmosphere for communism to take the, the, the fore in Russia. And as that happened, the black, it says the black horse goes to the most northern northern country. And like Herodotus says, um, he qualifies the Russians as the Scythians of ancient times and goes to the most northern country. Now, what follows 1917 is the great famine in Russia. So the black horse represents famine. It is a massive famine where between 5 million and 10 million people um, died we, we don't know exactly for sure but it was so um dark so horrible what was happening in it that there are the reports of cannibalism the 1921 famine in russia families were killing and devouring fathers grandfathers and children and ghastly rumors about sausages prepared with human corpses this brought about the expression ground to sausages now that's the world that they were living in, right? So I personally believe that if you look at Zechariah 6, now I'm not, again, I'm not saying this dogmatic, and I know other people will have different interpretations of this, but I always worried about the different, or not worried, but was interested in the different order, but the same colored horses that are identified in both Zechariah and Revelation as spirits. These different colored horses are different the same colored horses in different order why within different order well what we see is this positioning in the north and what follows the black rider or the black horse is the white horse and in revelation chapter six am i losing people here or just like are we getting it uh, let me know that you're getting what i'm saying here if you're if you're confused i'll explain it but in revelation one the white rider is the one who goes out conquering and to conquer well what does communism do communism conquers communism enslaves the idea uh, i've had arguments with people online not that i should about uh the the merits of socialism because people saying oh we need to be socialist and have a socialist government and i'm going you have no idea Right. The guise of communism is not that it is people ruled. Even if you look at Albert Pike's letters there, it is not about the people. It is not a, a equality among the people. It is control of the people through the elite. So this is what was, I believe, sort of in play. So if you look, the black rider goes to the north, 
famine breaks out straight after 1917, the war in the midst of the World War I, and you have this uprising of communism. Communism gets its for, for through Lenin, and then you get 1921, you get this famine, you get continual famines, you get another one about um, 15 years later in Russia as well. But the, the famine grows, and what happens? Communism gains control of the people. Now, communism, go, USSR, is built up, and even according to the satanic interpretation of Albert Pike, it builds up to control certain areas of the world. So, uh, an after effect, uh, after effect of World War II was that communism grew to such a power under Russia that it would, could have control over different areas, and it started to spread out. And as it started to spread out, as it started to lahat halek, had to go to and fro, it started to creep into different areas. And you had the likes of, uh, you know, the, the communist uh, Mao sort of uh, rule in China. And you had a, a famine there that again, if, I think it's 25 to 50 million dead. Now, all of that to say, what's been happening recently? Well, what's been happening recently, I believe that we're on a war footing. In fact, Prime Minister of Poland, uh, Tusk, you call him, said the times of peace, this is recent, I think it's last week, the times of peace, the post-war era is over. We are living through the now times, the pre-war era. I believe that we're already in World War Three. And I believe the leaders of the world, the free world, they believe, so free world, that's kind of an oxymoron, they believe that the same. And I, I think this is going to continually unfold. The, if you've ever read Trans Magazine, Trans Magazine, it's not a, a biblical source, but they predict certain things that will happen in the year. They, um, they go through different things and they say, what's the likely outcome? And they have been accurate like ridiculously accurate for so many years and as they've been ridiculously accurate i just want to read you some of these right this is what trends magazine has said about 2024 they believe that world war three has already begun um they believe that uh the world is at a point in 2024 where we we will see according to trends magazine the biggest economic catastrophe in written history not in living history not in living memory in written history so we have right now argentina they've got a 240 percent um inflation rate you have uh i think in america they uh, another trillion gets added to their debt every 100 days we've had quantitative easing of 95 billion per month you know, so 95 billion per month of just print, 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 print. This money's got no backing that we're heading for such an economic disaster. And what will the answer to be, that, be to that? It'll be more control. It'll be central bank digital currencies. It'll be, oh, look, our economy collapsed. Let's fix it. Oh, well, let's just take on a new um, economic outlook. Let's just have a new currency. We'll have this new currency and this currency will just be completely, by the way, regulated, automated and surveilled. And as it's surveilled, we might even link it to your uh, environmental social governance score or your diversity equity index to see that you're a good person. Oh, and by the way, there just seems to be this UN law coming in. And this UN law says that this UN uh, Crimes Against Humanity Treaty tends to say, well, you shouldn't be saying that Christian stuff anymore. In fact, you know, you should be taking the lead from the political leaders of today who say that uh, we'll call Resurrection Sunday uh, tra uh, Transgender Visibility Day. And you should be doing all of that instead. So what we'll do is you've got these CBDCs now, the, the economic... Uh, structure of the old, the old world order has crashed. So we're building back better with a new system that will mean complete and utter control. We're coming to this point. I mean, we're coming at a rate of knots. And I I just think that it's, it's worthwhile opening up our eyes to this. 
Now, you're not going to go off tonight with no hope. I am going to make sure that we sow hope into you because this is the thing is one of the biggest things. In fact, let me tell you this. My sister messaged me this morning that she had a dream. She'll be annoyed I'm sharing this, but she had a dream that an angel had appeared in the room with a letter and set the letter down in front of her. And then she had to wait for the angel to go. And then she opened up the letter in her dream. And in the dream, the words were, you're going home soon. So that's one of the things that you got to be aware of, right? Regardless of all of this stuff breaking out, regardless of wars, rumors of wars, pestilence, disease, deception, rising, regardless of all of that, you're going home soon. That's why we want to make sure that you are um, equipped. And if that means starting your own home church, house church, then you do so. So the UN are calling for this this sort of declaration where it's going to clamp down on things. We've also got online bills coming in that like you've heard me talk about a lot, the hate crime bills, the hate speech bills. All of these are coming into being very, very quickly. And as they're coming into being very quickly, you have to realize the escalating point you're in. The 1st of April, we have a major attack that would have been unthinkable before, but upon an embassy, and as it's upon an embassy, that's going to lead to repercussions, right? Whether that means that Iran strikes back and Israel grows in boldness and destroys the activities of Iran completely within Syria, specifically Damascus, well, then that would be a fulfillment of the end time prophecy of Isaiah 17. Or whether they go further and say, we're going to take out their weapons capability and we're going to attack, like Jeremiah 49 says, the bow of their weapons, the strength of their might in Elam. We're sitting at the precipice of this. And as we're sitting at the precipice of this, there should be a, an urgency in your spirit to go, oh my word, things are coming along so quickly. I got to make sure that that loved one who I haven't witnessed to, because every time I mention Jesus, they roll their eyes at me. I've just got to be louder, got to be more bold, got to be continually speaking out. Yes, Psalm 83 also, because we're seeing all of this build. So all of this stuff is happening. All of this stuff is coming about. And as we understand it, it's, it's time that we really look, well, if there's a plan and the enemy knows his scripture and the enemy is able to equip the, the workers of the satanic strategy with uh, what he calls vision, but really it's just interpretation of scripture. Think about it. So Albert Pike in 1871 has this vision. In this vision, he attributes to Lucifer. So where does Lucifer get his information from? Lucifer is not uh, controlling the outcome of things. He is. Uh, he doesn't know the day nor the hour of the return of Christ. No man does and no spirit does, no angel does. But what he does know is what the word says. So whenever you hear someone in Christ Christendom in the church say, oh, well, you can't, you're not supposed to know when it's end times. That's absolute twisting of scripture and wrong. And even the Satanists know. And as the Satanists know, they are thinking, well, you know what? We've got a church right now that say that they belong to Jesus Christ, but really they are so oblivious and so ignorant to what the word says that they have an upper hand in that way. Now, this is where I, I bring in Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu says, know your enemy and know yourself and you have nothing to fear for a hundred battles. When you look at World War One, well, of course, you know, we could equate what would happen in World War One and the uh, kind of provocation uh, of, of man to globalize according to scripture. Hi, because the Bible tells us in Revelation 13 that there will be that element. If, if the enemy had looked, and I believe he did, at Zechariah, he would have thought, right, well, we know what the black, the red, the white, we know what all these spirits represent, and they go to the north. And so if they go to the north, well, what's the most northern part, uh, northern country to Israel? Well, that's Russia. So let's send the, them there. Let's cause famine there. Let's cause the rise of communism there. So what I'm saying is, the enemy would have known the outcome, and it says in Albert Pike's letters that they supplied agent provocateurs to usher these things in. So the enemy knew the outcome because he is reading the Bible, right? 
What about uh, World War II that Albert Pike says World War II will culminate and as it finishes there will be the re-establishment of an Israeli state? Well, you have people who believe replacement theology and even the Satanists don't believe replacement theology because they believe what scripture says. Well, how does that work? Well, Isaiah 66 talks about and uh, gives a prophecy that can a nation be born again in one day? And if you know your history, there is only one nation on earth that was ever born in one day, uh, completely conceived and, and, and born on May 14th, 1948, and that's Israel. Or you can look at uh, Ezekiel 37 and how uh, Israel is brought up from the grave from what, if you read Ezekiel 37, it basically describes the Holocaust. And there's, you know, you can't deny the Holocaust and still keep the scripture. So whenever you look at this, the rebirth of the bones and the sinews and them all coming to life, that's the rebirth of Israel off the back of the destruction in Germany. So whenever you look at this, it, it's kind of, oh my word, the, the satanic world, the, the, the pluralistic uh, spirits, the B'nai Ha Elohim, the, the spirits uh, that are sons of God, that are seen as the hosts of the heavens, that fell in Genesis 6 and rebelled in Genesis 11 again, they read scripture. Now man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. But that, what you have to realize is that those who are against you are reading scripture. So when you know that the enemy has given a, a vision a, to Albert Pike that says World War One, well, you can look at Zechariah 1 and Zechariah 6 and work out, well, this is how World War One happens. This is how World War One is sort of coming apart to form the communist element, to take away the SARS and put communism in place. And World War II will cum culminate in the establishment of an Israeli state. Why would the enemy want an Israeli state established? Well, he doesn't, he hates Israel, but he knows according to scripture, it has to be reestablished. Re now I believe God reestablished that state a hundred percent. But the enemy is working things because he reads the scripture to go, well, we can we can work against this and we can work against this. And you can look at it now. How do we know that the Bible tells us that the end times there will be conflict between the Islamic world and the, the, the Jewish world, the Hebrew world? How do we know that? Hmm, scripture tells us. Ezekiel 38 and Ezekiel 39. We know that they congregate and they come around and we have Iran, we have Turkey, we have uh, nations that are known for their, their faith uh, of being uh, Shiite and, and Islamic and of the Islamic world. And listen, I'm going to show you a video, so please stick around and don't worry, I'll put myself on mute tonight when I show it. But when you look at this, the enemy knows this. We, can, we don't just have to look at... Um, I lost my train there. We don't just have to look at where, you know, Ezekiel 38 and 39. You can look at Joel 2 and Joel 3 and know there has to be an end time state of Israel. You can look at the book of Revelation and know that this is the case because you have the two witnesses. You have the 144,000. We know that scripture, Jeremiah 30, we, we know that Jeremiah and Isaiah both talk about this. Zechariah talks about this. How can the nations, the surrounding nations of Israel come against Israel if we didn't have a re-established Israel? Do you understand that how Albert Pike got his vision of 1871 that told accurately the first and the second, and I believe the third world war that we're currently in. How he got that was not because he was connected to the truth, but because he was connected to someone, a spirit that has been alive for millennia, who has read scripture, knows how to use it, knows how to twist it, but knows what it says. And yet the church won't open their word. The church won't open their word. Now this this kind of scares me because what does it say in Amos 8, 11? It says uh, that in the end times there will be a famine, not a famine like in 1921, but a famine of the word, right? A famine, not of bread and water, but of the word. Now what happens when you have a famine? People travel to the food source. And this is what we were saying to someone last week. We have people travel across the border to our church every Sunday. We have people travel for hours to the church every Sunday. Why? Because they know it's a place that they will be fed the word of God. And we'll take the word in its entirety. We'll apply the hermeneutics around the word so that they, they get the word. 
Now, when you look at this, people are going to me, and I got asked a question today. Somebody sent me a question. Um, and guys, get ready with questions for in a bit. I've still got stuff to say, but get ready. You can type questions in. But I was asked this today. Do you think the, effect, the events of yesterday, the attack upon uh, the, the bombing of the embassy could lead to anything in, t t uh, in terms of a retaliation from Iran, but also um, an Islamic retaliation. Now, I might be censored for this, but uh, an Islamic retaliation i am going to show you a video that i took from youtube i took from another youtube creator called uh let me see uh to see and i took this and this is a uh, two uh podcasters two uh muslim podcasters talking about the quran and talking about how they will approach and they should approach and people who believe the Quran should approach living in a Western country and what that means. And I'm, I will stop at a point to describe some of the words. So uh, you'll hear, to, uh, obviously there's the fair use when I use a video. So I, I'll stop and start and you'll just hear me talking over the top. Lots of the establishment and that's exactly what they are doing so let's go to this video that we have uh, which shows exactly what they want to do in terms of taking over the military and uh, of course also converting people and everything else let's go how can we yeah re-establish the Khilafah again so there are three methods correct me if I'm wrong yeah our brothers from Hizb al-Tahrir who believe uh, you do some grassroots dawah, you awaken the community, you awaken the ummah, but really you seek power from a select group of elite who will give you. So dawah is when you invite, when you talk to people socially and you invite them to the cause of the Islamic cause to the, uh, the around the Islamic faith to support uh, the Islamic agenda. Um, so. I'll and then you do maybe something like but not restricted to a military coup take over done yeah then you have our brothers who I don't like this term they are what you would call from the jihadi spectrum they say that no we cannot seek Nusra because they are Tahut and the army are Tahut we have to take it by force yep we have to establish Islam by force yeah then there are those who even though this movement has developed through the time they say well Hold on here, we need to deal with the means that we have, with the mechanisms that we have. Because of sensitivity, let us not mention certain no, groups. Of okay, so we will do da'wah. And we will seek Nusra from maybe the... the Ahl al wal Aqto, maybe the military elite. The military or, elite. Yeah, yeah. As yeah? one example. Yeah. Who are uh, working with the system. And also you have put your people in the military. Or you give dawah to the people already in the military. Yeah, and then, okay, when they become, those people, when they become, uh, when they accept your da'wah, yeah. and, and, and they become part of you, have to work within the system. To overthrow the system. To overthrow the system. To change the system. To change the system. Yeah. See the problem? <clears throat> so, this is, and again, look, this is not against any uh, Muslim people or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. I am saying go back to the Albert Pike letters and go back and then look at the Islamic faith and what the if you've ever read the Quran if you've read the hadiths for instance one of the questions that I was posed today as well was about uh, there's a hadith around the Mahdi now the Mahdi is the um, in Islam is the Messiah right who comes on what a white horse and he comes according to the hadith to make a treaty to make a peace treaty that will that is scheduled for seven years but then he will behead the infidels now talking about the four horsemen you understand what i'm talking about here because in revelation 6 he comes conquering and to conquer yes the 12th imam blue stars that's right and whenever you look at this again this is you have to understand two things right Whenever Jesus said to the Pharisees, 
when they when they accused him of casting out demons with the devil with devils casting out devils with devils he said a house divided against itself cannot stand well i believe like i said the enemy reads scripture and he was there with a pen and a or a pencil and he wrote that down because that is the strategy division okay you know we shared a testimony one of the guys uh witnessing and leading uh an, someone of the islamic faith to christ uh the other week and that was fantastic but the thing is is we're at a state where the world is being divided where it's this side against this side and this side against this side when really at its core a christian should be concerned with one side the side of god the side of truth the word in its entirety the word that says that as many as you do for these any of my these little ones any of my kind any of my brothers or sisters talking about uh the the, the hebrew nation at that point then he will count it on to us then at the same time when we know that we are to be peacemakers well the peacemakers are not people who are passive peacemakers the word in the greek is irene and it literally means a peace established after victory so like if you walk into off a battlefield and you you know the enemy has been vanquished now we're not talking physical war we're talking spiritual war here that establishes the peace Right. So in, in John 14, when Jesus says, I leave you peace, not as the world has peace, but as I bring peace, you have to understand Jesus didn't say that he came to bring peace. He also saw, said it in Matthew chapter 10 that he came to bring a sword. So what he was saying, he came to establish victory and peace over the spiritual warfare that we're in. So whenever we see all of this, we have to stand against that spiritual warfare. We have to stand against this spiritual warfare battle that we're in and say right wars and rumors of wars are increasing how do we stand against that well we know the scripture is telling us that this will unfold we know that the albert pike prophecies are only really the interpretation of scripture as scripture says so the enemy has read scripture told one of his minions and his minions put this out and says well let's get the work boys let's increase this well our job as the church is to stand in hope in the midst of this to bring hope to those that are hurting hurting to bring uh victory to those that are struggling now we can see that listen i'm telling you april seems to be marking this acceleration right this major acceleration right so first of april fifth of april then on the eighth of april we know that we have the the eclipse that everybody's up in arms about but as we have the eclipse what i'm more concerned about is the fact that nasa is firing three rockets into the sky they call it serpent deity the name of the mission it is named after apophis the so-called asteroid that they are apparently not concerned about even though it was predicted back in 2001 i think it was that it would have a, a, a an impact it could have a, a really high likelihood of an impact on earth on the 13th of april 2029 but then they turned around and says no 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 chance of an impact at all but you know what we're going to do is we're going to call this mission serpent deity so when the sun goes dark we're going to send three rockets up uh, in the vicinity of apophis the asteroid uh, nothing to look at here nothing to be worried about here and at the meantime we know that billionaires are building bunkers don't be concerned peasant keep yourself to yourself keep you know don't listen you know we know that in end times in revelation 6 that the 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 rich people of the world the the the, the people of the world the rulers try and hide themselves in caves but there is nowhere to hide from the wrath of the lamb there's nowhere to hide from the wrath of god the only thing that you can do is get yourself right with jesus the only thing that we can do is bring jesus to the masses bring the truth to those that are lost why because then that gets them to the point that we're removed before all of this unfolds and i think that what this is a real provocation for each and every one of us to you know get busy with the kingdom business and people will go well hold on a minute isn't the end times marked with signs in the heavens in the sense that there's going to be the sun will go into darkness and the moon will turn blood red and everybody you know we, we've had this 2017 everybody talking about blood moons and all of that me i'm more uh, interested in the fact that in a few years ago they found that there was major rust or hematite developing on the moon that was giving it the appearance of red because blood moons come and go they happen all the way through the ages but that 
has the scientists baffled, right? And by the way, in Matthew 24, verse 29, when Jesus gives that prediction that the sun will turn dark, which is a prediction that he qu he's quoting Joel too, the sun will turn dark and the moon will go blood red. The word there is hema. It's the same root word as what they found in the sun, hematite. Now, I find that interesting, but we're living in days in which things are escalating. CERN are opening up their, their business again, back to their uh, satanic nonsense. We're seeing uh, not just wars and rumors of wars. We are in, in my opinion, the Third World War. It is growing in momentum. It is starting off in different factions and skirmishes. You know, when we look back in history at World War One and World War Two, we see the major battles, but you look at the build up around it, you look at the geographical location, specifically with World War Two, that you know, the invasion of Poland and different things, and then it all breaks out. And we're at that point, and in the midst of that, the main thing that I want to make sure is that our hearts do not grow weary. In Luke chapter twenty one, let me see if I've got any of these. I do. Yeah, in Luke 21, verse 28, it says, Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your head because your redemption draweth nigh. Your redemption draws near. So we should be gone. You know what? Yes, we are in difficult times. Yes, it is not back like when, you know, I, I often say to my kids, you know, I miss the 80s. It is not back like in the 80s and it's never going back there we're living in dark days and darkness according to isaiah 60 covers the land and deep darkness the people but in that time and we are also told in isaiah 60 you believer in god saved redeemed individual part of the church of jesus christ arise and shine for your light has come and as we arise and shine, we turn everybody up to go here look up because what one of the things that you're going to be uh you're all looking down at all the darkness and everything that's going on around the world. Look up. Keep your eyes on, on the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because he will come in an instant. Be ready. Be a spotless bride. Be about your father's business. Be so busy for him that this world has no hold on you. You understand that you can walk through this world untouched, unscathed by it because you are not off this world. It doesn't mean that darkness doesn't come at you. It doesn't mean that destruction doesn't come to your door. But you're not off this world. You're a citizen of heaven. Amen. Let me just remove that banner. Where is it? There we go. Um, guys, if you have any questions or comments, uh, you know, let me say them out. Type in questions. Uh, yeah. So, guys, any questions, let me know, please. Uh, I'm typing in question now. I can't see it. I know we've had a whole load of technical issues tonight. I did have other things to go through with you and show you. But my main thing was to point out, right? Albert Pike did not have uh, some sort of major revelation that we don't have. In fact, the Bible shows it. It is so plain to see. You can see the culmination and the growth of communism through Zachariah. You can see the the call upon world war the world wars in the Olivet Discourse. You can see the culmination of World War Two with the rebirth of Israel through Isaiah 66, through Jeremiah 30, through Ezekiel 37, through loads and a tirade of scriptures. You can see that. And you can see where we're at with World War One or with World War Three, that we're seeing all of this stuff come to place, come to play. Um, knowing that which raised up the Lord shall raise up also by Jesus, and shall present with you. Amen. Um, I'm sorry, people kept phoning you, Cindy. Do you know what? Just hang up on them. I'm only joking. No, actually, just tell them about Jesus. That's the best thing to do. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. What do you think? I think that is the real motive or what's NASA's motive for shooting rockets up toward Apophis. OK, so if you read what they actually say, they talk about studying the solar effects on the upper atmosphere or the upper earth atmosphere on the solar effects now this should i should have probably said this when we talked about the hematite the rusting the turning red of the moon that we have been seeing for some years now that it's increasing i think i've got some uh pictures on this 
uh, when we talk about did I not load up half of my pictures oh here we go when we talk about the rusting of the moon that we're seeing right the scientists have actually said right now that that has come from the upper atmosphere of the earth right so it is not something because there's no uh conditions to cause oxidation oxidation or rusting out at space it is being carried as a solar wind from the atmosphere of the earth from the upper atmosphere now i think all of this is connected i think probably two different ports right if we're talking about why the the moon is turning red we know according to the scientists a solar wind they say has brought this atmosphere from the upper atmosphere uh through the solar wind to the moon right to cause it to turn red so they could be looking at that because that actually is something similar to what they have said what i th and, and if they're aware of scripture if there is a satanic approach to this well then that wouldn't surprise me because you know if billionaires are getting in their bunkers and they're thinking well hold on a minute the moon's turning red and we can't explain it except from this upper atmosphere maybe go up and explore that if i were to be completely honest my heavy suspicion is that apophis is more of a concern than they let on now not that i'm a fan of his but neil degrasse tyson has already said that uh the trajectory of apophis is open to so many variables that it could change in a second but it, it is likely in his opinion on the 13th of april 2029 to knock out um the the orbiting satellites which would do what well that would knock out a lot of our communications knock out knock out the internet it could throw us back quite a few years the original finding and if the, uh, there's been nasa whistleblowers come out that have said that no the trajectory of apophis is likely for some sort of either to get closer than we think or to have an impact well then that would fit with scripture now i'm not saying it's wormwood okay i'm not saying it's wormwood because you know like mondo gonzalez was saying recently uh when he came on with me that it also passes again in 2036 so it could be wormwood it just could be off a different date but coincidentally um when i did when i uh sort of showed uh, a prophetic countdown of destruction i showed that before world war one uh 1917 alistair crowley had a summoning ceremony of the spirit of destruction the angel of the abyss and then in 1914 world war one broke out and then 1933 hitler has a summoning ceremony six years later world war ii 1996 hillary clinton has a summoning ceremony five years later war on terror breaks out under 2000 uh, under 9 11 um 2016 summoning ceremony at cern and then boom four years later covid destruction across the world war on covid that was their terminology and in 2022 a summoning ceremony for all to see at the commonwealth games with bow well three years later that would take us to 2025 so if we look to 2029 and we go back three and a half years we would end up at 2025 now that could mean and i'm not a date setter but i am saying that we are certainly within a window for the tribulation time frame we're certainly in a window for rapture we're certainly in a time in which things seem to be converging but again only christ is in, in control of opening the seals so we could look at that and say everything's cooperating around 2025 to 2030 right um and you could go well look that would make if if the if for instance the rapture happened and tribulation broke out then you've got three and a half years in you get wormwood uh which would be apophis that would hit the date of 13th of april 2029 and then you get the next three and a half years after that and boom you have the full tribulation time however it could happen much later but i i look at it as well and i think we're certainly in the window when we look at the Essene calendar and we see that what is classified uh, or classed sorry as the last jubilee of the age of the church 
the last 50 years of the age of the church is sectioned into 2025 to 2075 by the original biblical calendar okay so anything could happen i i personally believe the rapture and i'm not a date setter but i do believe the rapture will happen between 2025 and 2075 now could it happen if you look back as josh peck would say if you go back to the original or you go back to the last jubilee of the age of the torah before the age of the church it started at 25 AD to 75 AD but the majority of prophetic fulfillment happened in the start of that last jubilee so it could be that the same sort of pattern repeats itself it might not be it might be five years after that it might be five years after that i personally think i don't know how much darker things can really get without full-blown uh jacob's trouble breaking out right um i think we're at the precipice of things speeding up but again it might be uh 10 years from now now i don't personally believe that but i don't believe in date setting so i would say that there is an interesting focus upon apophis certainly by the so-called powers that be for um despite them saying that they don't have that interest despite them trying to downplay it um uh all right i've got a question here is there a scripture that talks about Israel attacking Iran's nuclear factory? Yes, there is, right? Um, Jeremiah chapter 49, and Jeremiah 49, um, so the Iran was Persia, but Persia included the, the territory of Elam. So when it talks about Elam's bow, and it's, it's I think it's referred to as its, its bow of might, so it's, its source of might is destroyed and it actually does sort of look like um, possible nuclear fallout if you read Jeremiah 49 because it causes the leaders to vacate that area to vacate that area and I think um, I think it's Bill Salas does a, a great study on this because he points out that the mountain ranges separate what is Elam and Elam is actually the territory in which um, all of the excuse me all of the nuclear development that's happening for iran but there are mountain ranges that separate that from tehran so people could still be in tehran but at the, because we know ezekiel 38 would continue um but that area would be sparse like sort of just gone you know uh with a nuclear fallout um i hope that answers your question do you think cern is the key to the abyss it seems to me that god often lets fools bring trouble upon themselves i think it really could be um now when it, whenever we talk about it, i think that when we talk about the abyss i don't think it's a case of a hole in the ground right i do believe it's interdimensional the same way that we would see the likes of ufos or uaps pop into uh view one minute and pop out in another minute i believe they're demons i believe or they're certainly of the the Bene Elohim sort of uh, genre and they pop in and pop out and I believe it's interdimensional the book of Enoch first Enoch 76 talks about 12 portals coming from heaven into this dimension and it strikes me that the abyss would be although it's not in heaven the abyss would be a dimensional portal and that's where it gets interesting because that's really what we're even when CERN opened up I think it was their head scientist says that we're opening a portal to hell and I think that to some extent, even if some of them are mocking and joking, there's some realization there that what they're doing is, ooh, it's dangerous. And the fact that it's centered in a village that was known for having a temple to Apollo, and we call the angel of the abyss Apollyon, the destroyer, or if you look at the Kumain Sibyl or Virgil's Eclogue that identifies the return of Apollo, the destroyer, who I think Derek Gilbert uh identifies as the antichrist as the, the this sort of one world ruler uh comes on the scene i think that certainly uh they're uh, they're playing with matches that's what they're doing um 
do I think that NASA are trying to knock Apophis off course or trigger some sort of event? I don't think they're trying to knock it off course. And the reason I don't, um, I'm sure there's been somebody in NASA that's watched Bruce Willis do this and thought, you know, that's a good idea. But I can't see it being something that would actually come to fruition. I think if you look, I, I, look, if you put two and two together this way, the way I would look at this is that there's all these billionaires who are investing heavily in bunkers, underground bunkers. They are not doing so because they think that'll be a nice place to live. They're doing so out of some knowledge. Now, we know that there's already cooperation and there's been cooperation for years between the tech industry and the intelligence agencies. In fact, we know not just cooperation, but they are very much in bed together. So I don't doubt that information has been passed to some degree. So when you see them building all of this, I think they're expecting a cataclysmic event. Now, we know what Wormwood does in Revelation 8. Third of the earth, boom, right? Proper, proper destruction. And we know that there will need to be uh, systems for getting water because you know the water is made better and all of this. We know all of that, right? And all of that is coming. We can see it biblically. And it actually tells you this in not just Revelation but 6, but Joshua chapter 10. So Joshua chapter 10 gives a foreshadow of this. The kings uh, try and hide in the cave of Makeda. And they try and hide, five kings try and hide from Joshua. Joshua being a, a foreshadow of Jesus, they all try and hide in that cave away from them. And the thing is, is there's no outrunning it. There's no hiding it from it. Joshua finds them and puts them on display and they're hung. And I actually think that we're living in the, the, this time. I think that what you're seeing is possibly a fact-finding mission. Now, that's conjecture, I'm guessing, right? That they're shooting rockets up there, not because if they, if they struck an asteroid, they would be in danger of creating a sooner cataclysmic event or redirecting what they said wasn't on course to be on course now they could be either looking to nudge but i i suspect that they're probably fact finding times dates that sort of thing confirming things confirming where it's going to land that sort of thing so that they can i just that's my opinion and again it's not based on anything other than my own reasoning um do you think the demonic locusts in Revelation 9 has something to do with transhumanism as to why people can't die? I actually, look, um, when in terms of the people not being able to die, I believe that's a judgment, right? And I believe that's a judgment from God that relates back to Noah. So remember that when all of this is broken down, it's a spiritual war. And it's a war that, you know, uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, that it's not carnal, it's spiritual. And what we're warring against in the spirit and what the war against is in the spirit are those heavenly hosts of Genesis 2, 1. That in Psalm 82 ruled the world in wickedness. In Deuteronomy 32, verse 8, tried to cover the territories of men, cover the territories of men as rulers that we see in Daniel 10, you know, the Prince of Persia warring, right? So our wars are in the spiritual sense. And I believe the five months, because Noah was on the boat for that time and all of the Nephilim, the seed, of those Bene Elohim died at that point, and I believe they become the Rephium, the demons, right? So as they die at that point, I believe that what we see in Revelation chapter nine is a complete and utter sort of, I guess, uh, I guess for me, it's kind of just a, a repetition of that, but kind of showing up that the people cannot die for five months because they're being tormented by whom the demons in the the the, the demonic horde the locust beast the demonic horde of abaddon and apollyon in the abyss that come out and torment people for five months they cannot die so this is kind of like those who died during the the first judgment are coming out and being able to give are, are given free reign of those who rejected god 
in the second judgment and those in Revelation 14 that are uh, the, actually in Revelation 9 as well those who are, are, who are marked by the mark of God are freed are, are, are sort of kept safe from any of this affliction in terms of transhumanism I think transhumanism has an awful lot to play but I don't think this is something man-made I personally believe that Abaddon is this entity that is I guess he's, he's one of he's one if not the major entity in hell right and as such I believe this is a demonic infestation I do believe that there's there's different things you know I know that people talk about um, you know the 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 ships and the helicopters that are made to look like this and all of this but i don't actually think that's it that is i think this is truly demonic and i think you will well we won't see it but i think that in that time it will be horrific and if you think about the nephilim dying in the the and, and the torment of the the drowning during the first judgment and this second judgment that comes across those who have rejected god i think that's what that is i think it's the timing for me is too too much to ignore um do you think that there any is anything biblical with the two types of cicadas coming at the same time this month um I, I wouldn't say directly, but I will say that one of the things that we do see at this time is <sighs> creation and rebellion, right? So if you think about it this way, creation is has been groaning since the start, since the fall, it has been continually groaning. And then you will see anomalies continually happen. Now, whenever we get to the tribulation, we know that it has... Um, I guess the the same modus operandi as the uh, plagues of Egypt and there's very much an overlay prophetically of those but in terms of these this being prophetic I would say it's prophetic in the sense that it's 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 creation rebelling it is the groaning of creation reaching a crescendo of going right you know this things are coming to an end the seasons coming to an end um, and I think that's where we'd see that not directly biblical but biblical in the sense that you know creation is properly resisting um i think that's it i think that's all the questions i can see do you think so uh, yeah i think that's all the questions if there's anything else you can ask me now before i head off did you get something from tonight i know that we had a whole load of issues there uh with youtube not allowing us to actually stream um it is the image of the antichrist that causes all to take the mark of the beast that image will be transhumanism i certainly believe the technology behind it will be a transhumanistic te technology it'll be integrated biologically with technology and i think that's one of the i can't remember who said that it was carolyn um that is one of the markers of the time that we're in the very fact that uh klaus schwab calls it the fourth industrial revolution the integration of biologics with technology um should set everybody who reads scriptures their hairs on end and go hold on a minute this is what you want to do it's like they took the bible and said oh all of those satanic things that we read about that god event god will eventually do away with oh they all sound like a great idea so that's that's certainly something we're saying you know the the micro dot tattoos the integration of rfid chips and all of that sort of stuff all of these uh things are continually growing and transhumanism you know the idea of transhumanism is eugenics in play right eugenics was coined and you've heard me say this a million times the phrase eugenics was first used by sir francis galton in 1883 now who was sir francis galton he was the cousin of charles darwin so it comes off the idea that there is no special creation so charles darwin comes out uh 24th of november 1859 with the origin of species and says oh 
no such you're not wonderfully created you're not specially created you're not formed specially and like it says in psalm 139 but instead you're just this mutation of cells then his cousin comes around and says well if you're just this mutation of cells rather than being god's image let's make ourselves in our image and make ourselves better this started the transhumanistic movement now where we are now it is galore it is literally um in every facet of society now and it is growing and the ideas of Neuralink and all of these things and this is where it takes us back to no the days of noah matthew 24 37 the reason it takes us back to the days of noah is because if you read the historical accounts not just the biblical accounts which by the way you cannot get away from it the biblical accounts are the god breathed accounts second timothy 3 16 says so but there are historical narratives that are coded in the bible for instance the book of jasher and the book of jasher is quoted in the bible is used in joshua 10 and in other places so that gives it a historical sort of tick from god in my opinion and when you look at the book of jasher it talks about genetic manipulation the manipulation of the genetic line which was what happened in the fall in genesis 6 but it also talks about these fallen angels the bene ha elohim the the sons of god the council of god of psalm 82 they played about with creation and tried to chop and change genetics that's transhumanism and yeah it'll be 100 percent utilized when it comes to the mark of the beast 100% I believe that look to, I put up a Tom Horn clip the other day and it echoed um, let me see if I can add it quickly and if I can if the computer allows me to I will show it and hopefully it doesn't echo let me, there we are um, so this is in terms of Apophis but Tom Horn actually says these are linked, right? So the late Tom Horn, great, great man of God, he says that these are linked. I think I've got the full clip, but basically if I don't, the idea of a genetic, uh, I guess a disease X coming off the back of Apophis, which will necessitate a mark that will be intrinsically linked with transhumanism it'll be technology and biologics combining to form this so i'll show this without the echo i believe that apophis is going to fulfill the book of revelation chapter 8 as the wormwood asteroid now given that i believe that why do i make this jump over to also saying that I believe it's carrying um, a, a microorganism with a virus in it. It is because if you study the book of Revelation 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, there's a whole series of events that set in motion ultimately what leads to the mark of the beast. And in Revelation 13 it says, He causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and in their forehead, and without which no man might buy or sell. And the phrase there in the Greek, causeth all, literally means that some kind of a trigger event, a global trigger event, uh, is set into motion that then requires everybody on the planet to have to respond to it in a particular kind of way. Uh, and I believe that that trigger event is going to be following the impact of Apophis on the earth the release of this alien microorganism. In other words, it's like an Andromeda stress. I believe that Apophis is going to fulfill the book of Revelation. Um, that uh, should hopefully answer that question there. Um, I, I should have Billy, Billy Crone on if possible, uh, would be great. I will send out the invitation. Um, you know, we do have Pete Garcia on again. I think we've got the, I think we're 17th of this month. We've also got Kurt Reid coming up. Some of you will know Kurt Reid. Um, I'll be on again with Brandon Holthouse. Um, and I was going to, I was going to talk to LA. I'm, I'm talking to LA Marzulli on Friday, but I was going to talk to a, uh, 
just to catch up but i was going to talk to him about coming back on because there's been so much development in terms of signs that i think la would be a good one to have on as well again um you know uh so anyway that's 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 the plan so if anybody and, and if, if you do have any suggestions about people that i'm just contacting people that i talk to and asking them to come on but if you have uh guys that you would like on let me know um pete and i will continue to do things regularly as well uh it's very like the 10 place you can see the first could trigger the second and so on yeah and certainly uh the tribulation is mirrored on the 12 tra 12 plagues of egypt because remember the 10 or sorry, the 10 plagues of egypt the 10 plagues of egypt were a direct slap in the face for the egyptian gods small deities right the b'nai elohim those fallen who presented themselves as gods to be worshipped and assert the worship of man onto themselves and away from yahweh so um yeah that will be again what happens during the tribulation so guys i hope you got something from tonight again i really really apologize about the technical issues and being laid on um and i didn't actually realize i was live on another stream because i couldn't see any comments and i couldn't see anything like else so if people are watching this back you might get a, a minute of me going am i live am i live so god bless <laughs> um guys join us tomorrow night we will be uh continuing bible study exodus 23 tomorrow we will continue to look at the prophetic uh, fulfillment of things the prophetic uh uh sort of unfolding unveiling of things um so that's the plan um and guys if, I, I can see questions popping up now but I, i'm going to take if you keep those questions till tomorrow night and give me them tomorrow night and then i i'll get time to go over them um so guys god bless and please take a second to share this because the original you know was a